I recently purchased an 8,000 pound four post car lift from National Auto Tools. With the help of a couple of buddies, we were able to easily assemble it in an afternoon. The only issue I've encountered is occasionally the breaker will trip when the car lift hydraulic pump is being used. To solve this issue, what I'm going to do is install a new outlet on a new 20 amp breaker, as well as install a new electrical box on that car lift itself, which will hold four outlets. The outlets on the post of the lift will allow tools to be ran while working on a car underneath the lift. Lights can also be installed, as well as the power unit itself for the hydraulic pump. You're going to need a cover as well as a heavy duty extension cord, a two gang electrical box, and two 20 amp receptacles. You're also going to need this little clamp which is used to hold the extension cord into the electrical box. On this other side, I ended up using a plastic two-gang box instead of a metal one. I needed a piece of conduit to run into my existing electrical connection that goes to the breaker box. So I got these two couplings, as well as a cover, a 20 amp GFCI, and a regular receptacle. As far as tools, a couple razor blades, a wire stripper, an electrical tester, a couple screwdrivers, a multimeter, and a power drill. Make sure to get the correct breaker for your electrical box as well as some electrical tape. Other items that you may need include 10 gauge wire, black and white, as well as some 12 gauge wire. You're also going to need some wire nuts and possibly some conduit to run to the existing electrical panel. We're going to start this project by building the electrical box that connects on the lift. I used a metal two gang outlet box and I ended up capping the holes that I'm not going to use. I got this clamp which is used to hold the power wire into the electrical box so it doesn't come loose. Screw it into the open end of the electrical box. Now you're going to need to unwind your heavy gauge extension cord. Go ahead and measure how long it needs to be. The shorter the run, the better, since you don't want to put a lot of amperage through an extension cord. Go ahead and cut it with a pair of snips. Carefully use a razor blade to cut back the outer protective shield. Be sure not to damage the three wires on the inside. Pull away the insulation paper and separate the three wires, black, white, and green. Loosen the two Phillips head screws on the clamp. Wrap the end of insulation with electrical tape so it doesn't come loose. Pull a few inches of the extension cord through the clamp and then tighten the two screws. Give it a tug to make sure it's tight. Strip a short length of 12 gauge green wire. Inside of the metal junction box, remove the green screw. Loop the green copper wire around the screw and screw it back into place. Strip a short length of 10 gauge black wire. Insert the black wire into the brass screw on the outlet. Tighten the brass screw, then strip 10 gauge white wire. Insert the white wire into the neutral side of the outlet. Tighten the silver screw. Now strip the other ends of those two wires. Connect those two wires into the hot and neutral side of the second outlet.
strip a short length of ground wire. Insert the ground wire into the green screw and tighten it. Repeat that with the other outlet. Now strip another length of black and white wire. On one of the outlets, add the white wire into the neutral side. On that same outlet, add the black wire into the hot side. As a precautionary, go ahead and wrap the entire outlet connections with electrical tape. Strip the three wires coming from the extension cord. Use a wire nut to connect all the ground connections. Use electrical tape on the wire nut. Strip the white wire coming from the outlet and connect it to the white wire from the extension cord. Repeat the same with the black wire. Now position the two outlets and put the cover plate on. Now we're going to add a new circuit to the breaker box. All garage outlets must be wired to a GFCI. Pop out the cap on the plastic electrical box. This yellow sticker indicates the load side of the GFCI. Strip a short length of black and white wires. Connect the black wire to the brass screw on the load side, then connect the white wire to the silver screw on the load side. After connected, strip the two ends. On the regular outlet, connect the black GFCI load wire to the brass screw and then connect the white load wire to the silver screw. Connect a grounding wire to each receptacle. Since my breaker box is extremely close to the location of this new outlet, I only ran three feet of wire. Strip the ends that are coming inside the box. Connect the stripped white wire to the line side of the GFCI with the silver screw. On the line side of the GFCI, connect the black wire to the brass screw. Use a wire nut to connect all the ground wires. Wrap both receptacles with electrical tape as well. Now fit the cover plate on. Now it's time to add in the new breaker. Plan how you're going to run the cables from the breaker to the new outlet. 
For me, I just had to drill through this elbow and it brought the wires straight to the breaker panel. Open up your breaker panel and make sure the power is off. The front cover is held on by a few screws around the edges. Lift off the front cover and make sure the power is off. Use a feed wire to pull through your new wires. I connected the electrical box above the elbow. Once the wires are ran into the electrical box, cut them to length. Locate the grounding bar, which will likely have green or copper wires already in it. Loosen a screw and add in the green wire from your electrical outlet. Now install the neutral wire into the neutral bus bar. Strip the black wire and insert it into the breaker. Make sure the screw holding in the hot wire is tight. Now position the teeth and snap in the new breaker. On the front cover, make sure to remove the tab so that it fits over the new breaker. Reinstall the cover and make sure the screws are tight. It's definitely a smart idea to label the new breaker. Shut the panel door and make sure the main power is on. When the GFCI first gets power, you're going to need to click the reset switch. If the GFCI has it, the indicator should be green. Test the outlet to make sure it works. Now position the electrical box and screw it into the wall. To connect the outlet to the lift, I used sticky tape since it's less permanent. The post may be oily from being in the garage. Go ahead and clean it thoroughly. Remove the adhesive backing of the tape and stick the box where it needs to go. Now you can plug the pump from your lift into the outlet above it. Now you can plug the extension cord into the new GFCI that was added. Go ahead and test out the new circuit to make sure that it functions properly and the breaker doesn't trip. After testing the lift and ensuring it properly works, you're all done and this project is over. Thank you for watching.